um, it has a it, it is a major fruit of the first Asian and African conference uh, dated from uh, 1955 in uh, Bandung, Malaysia. So, uh, which is a very important international conference, uh, it has a his historical status. Uh, it's still now we are uh, uh, just a, a few years ago, uh, all the leaders in the Asia and Africa celebrated the 50 years of the Bandung Conference. I mean, that was in 2015. So uh, ALCO as a major fruit of the first Asian and African conference, it has a mission to contribute to a wide range of international law matters, including the international law development and, and all sorts of modern contract and uh, specializing uh, protection of the investment. And most importantly, it is very updated and it is um, go to the, uh, focus on the modernization of the international law, like the e-commerce and et cetera. So that's why uh, dispute resolution is also one of the major contributions of ELCO. And as we know that ELCO uh, it's very important, as I mentioned, it has 47 member states uh, across Asia and Africa, uh, which account for two thirds of the world population uh, contributing to uh, 26 trillion GDPs. So uh, more than 80% of the ELCO member states are active member of the Belt and Road Initiative initiated by uh, China. So it is, uh, we can uh, imagine there will be uh, more and more commercial transaction um, uh, arising out from this, uh, these member states. So that's why ELCO, as I mentioned, it also focus uh, very much on uh, promoting the use of international arbitration as a effective method for resolving commercial disputes arising out uh, from the region and also from the world. It has six regional arbitration centers now with the presence of the newly established Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center under the ELCO uh, auspicious. So why ELCO Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center is uh, important or so special? Um, because I, to my understanding, um, as uh, my observation, China is playing a more and more active low role economically. Uh, it, that's why that's trigger the needs for more dispute resolution services, or maybe more effective and uh, cost effective and time effective dispute resolution services um, to address the needs for the um, uh, for the increasing needs for dispute resolution services arising out from the Asia and Africa region. And the, uh, the prime minister, uh, the, the premier of the People's Republic of China announced the, in, the, in, the inception of the Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center together with ELCO uh, in 2021. Um, and later on, just a few months later, uh, the MOU has been signed and between ELCO, uh, the then secretary of ELCO, uh, Dr. Uh, Kennedy Gastron, and, and also the representative of China in the United Nations, they signed the um, MOU uh, specifically for the inception of the Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center. So this is uh, some uh, beautiful picture capturing the exciting moment of the establishment or the opening of our ELCO, uh, Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center. And the ceremony was uh, attended by uh, legal uh, international legal officers and also the Hong Kong government's representative, the uh, central government's representative as well, and many uh, leading executives from the Hong Kong uh, business community also attended the ceremony. So it's a it's a good uh, event, and it's uh, uh, it marks the development of Hong Kong 
dispute resolution. And moving forward, and I will little, give a little bit on our structure of the Elko Hong Kong Regional Center. And we are a international organization established by international law, and we are headquartered in Hong Kong. And um, the daily operation are led by our director, Mr. Uh, Nick Chen, MSJP, and uh, under uh, our director, there are five uh, committees attending to uh, different matters. For example, the staff and finance and audit committee attending to our corporate internal corporate governance matters. And we also have an appointment committee attending to appointment of neutrals, including uh, appointment of mediator and appointment of arbitrator as well. Um, so we are have a very transparent procedure and uh, decision-making process for uh, appointment of arbitrator. And if there are any uh, challenges or complaints uh, raised by the parties to a dispute concerning the appointment of the arbitrator, we have a special committee to look into the challenges, which is called the challenge committees. And also we have a specialized committee called the rules committee attending to uh, the development of our arbitration rules and mediation rules as well to make sure our rules are incorporating the latest development of the best practice in dispute resolution. And also we have a panel listing committee uh, overseeing the matters um, of uh, recruiting arbitrators and mediator because uh, arbitrators and mediators are of crucial importance in the success of an arbitration center. We need to have a different talent and, uh, with diverse background, um, specialized in different industry, uh, to sit on our um, a panel of arbitrators so that we can provide different choices and we can cater for different uh, needs uh, from various cases when, because we are expecting that we will have to handle um, different cases uh, from different jurisdictions and from different industries as well. So that's why with these five committees, um, we will be, we are now operating very smoothly and uh, with a robust uh, corporate governance structure. So this is uh, uh, mainly our uh, structure of the Elko Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center. In terms of the operational wise, um, we uh, have launched our website. As I mentioned at the beginning, we focus very much on providing uh, cost effective and time effective uh, online dispute resolution services. We have launched a dedicated website and with a fully yeah. web-based online platform um, comprising uh, arbitration and mediation. And you can conduct all uh, arbitration and mediation online through our website without uh, coming to Hong Kong uh, for an in-person meeting. So all these technology are available now and if you would like to come to visit Hong Kong, that would be of most welcome. And you can see that we will have a very nice facilities, um, the state of the art uh, facility as well and technology. And we are centrally located in Hong Kong, in the area in central, uh, which is a CBD in Hong Kong and well connected to the uh, metro links and the airport as well. So it's very convenient to find us uh, physically if you would like to visit Hong Kong. Um, in terms of the vision and mission, um, we have these five objectives for our center. And um, we will be serving as a coordinating agency in the ELCO dispute settlement system because we are part of ELCO. As I mentioned, ELCO has six arbitration centers in the world. Uh, located in different countries in uh, Africa and in uh, Asia as well. So we are the new one. Uh, we will become an, uh, a good addiction to this dispute resolution settlement. And we have the proximity to mainland China and to East Asia and maybe North Asia as well. So we will be in a 
very good position to um, to coordinate with other dispute resolution center under the ELCO umbrella so that we can work closer with each other and make us uh, make the whole ELCO dispute resolution system uh, stronger, uh, bigger and stronger. So, and also we uh, will promote the growth and effective function of arbitration institution and other ADR services, including ODR in China and Hong Kong. So that's our, our goal. ODR is our feature. And we believe that will be the future for, uh, for the global practitioners as well. That's why we are here to talk about ODR. And uh, we, have the, we will provide facilities for ADR. If you uh, come to Hong Kong to handle your dispute on, offline, you, that will be uh, most of, of most welcome. And we will do that nicely with our wonderful facilities and meeting rooms as well. And also, we will. Um, oh, sorry. Wait a minute. So I think we might have a technical uh, problem with uh, Mr. Dennis. I'm sure he's going to reconnect very shortly. Uh, Mr. Dennis had a technical issue. He's joining us right away.
Mr. Dennis, if you can connect audio, please. I connected again. All right. Sorry. No worries. Sorry. Maybe I have pressed the wrong button. Uh, where uh, can you enlighten me? Where should I start to, to continue on which slide? Can you please reshare your screen? Yes. Sherry. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, should I start from here? Which slide should I start? Uh, we finished the slides. I think the next one. Uh, the next one. This one. Uh, after. After this one. Key of the two. Uh, yeah, I guess. Ah, yes, I'm. I remember that because I was, there was some window pops up. I just uh, pressed the wrong button. And I just mentioned that uh, these are the five objectives, but to save time, I won't go through it again. Uh, these are the main goals of our center, and we will um, strive to achieve all these objectives. And here comes the dispute resolution clause. I uh, have mentioned this in an arbitration course. I would suggest. Um, uh, lawyers and in-house counsel may consider adopting this clause to the contract uh, for their clients, uh, which they are going to enter into with their counterpart. And in particular, with, if the contract has some Chinese elements that may uh, be justifiable to uh, use Hong Kong International, uh, Hong Kong Regional uh, Center for Arbitration under the ELCO dispute settlement because you will enjoy a lot of um, benefits by using this ELCO Hong Kong regional arbitration platform arbitration rules. And he, here continues our activities and um, ELCO Hong Kong, we, um, uh, the most important thing is I, we will, I will explain a little bit later on, we are in a country neutral role and uh, what this is a major uh, advantages. I see that uh, because the uh, ELCO Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center is an international organization established by international law. That means we don't have a, a nationality of our, our arbitration center. Uh, we are part of ELCO. And of course, rule of law in Hong Kong is very good and deep bench of professional and you, uh, if a uh, dispute resolution proceeding is, is uh, carry on in Hong Kong, and that may require different kinds of professional, like a lawyer and auditor, experts of uh, different kinds to attend the um, arbitration proceeding. And of course, um, uh, we have a prime location in CPD, I mentioned that, and we have rich network of supplier, investor, and customer as well. And these are the uh, major advantages. Of course, the, you can enjoy the benefits of New York Convention, law tax in Hong Kong, and uh, you can get into the Bell and Road and Greater Bay Area uh, uh, with very opportunity to, um, uh, to grow your business. So these are the project of using uh, Elko Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center. And these are the, um, as I mentioned, uh, law tech and ODL is the feature of um, ELCO, uh, Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center. Um, we are in particular in a position, uh, in a good position to handle uh, investor state or a commercial dispute involving a government. Like for example, if there is a big in investment project, uh, in a, in a certain country and the other and the counterpart of the of the uh, of the contract is a, is a government that may uh, trigger the concern on uh, the neutrality of the arbitration center they are going to be it would be uh, perceived as more neutral choice to refer the dispute to 
and international organization such as ELCO, Hong Kong uh, Regional Arbitration Center. So this is the advantages of ELCO Hong Kong International uh, Regional Arbitration Center. And we can particularly handle business to business dispute, business to consumer as well, and also business to government. So these are, we can handle all types of dispute and in particular specialize in uh, maybe uh, have benefits in handling the government related commercial disputes. And as I mentioned, uh, we are an international organization and protected by uh, uh, the, the state of which it is given by uh, the Hong Kong domestic legislation. The, here comes the slides showing that our director, uh, um, Mr. Nick Chen, attending a logical um, uh, section in Hong Kong. Um, uh, seeking the privilege of uh, an immunity of, of our center and our personnel. And of course, the Hong Kong Legislative Council supported um, the, uh, the, the initiative and granted the privilege and immunity of our center and our uh, staff as well. So that has been uh, done and recognized by the Hong Kong law that we have the international organization status. So this is a very useful for dispute resolution. So unlike other arbitration centers in Hong Kong, uh, we are special. That's why we need to let uh, our potential uh, user uh, know that uh, we, are, uh, at, we have this kind of privilege and immunity. And this is the... Uh, relevant article in the Hong Kong uh, legislation. It has an uh, international organization privilege, ELCO Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center order, uh, the section three of which declares the provision of the, uh, um, uh, the privilege of, uh, and uh, immunity are granted. So I won't read uh, this article out, just let you know that we have this kind of uh, special status in under the Hong Kong law. And here are some um, promotional activities that we are going to, uh, uh, to promote the center's uh, status and inception and our services as well. And we actively attend um, the attended the 2002 Legal Week in Hong Kong. And also, this is also the Legal Week event just uh, two months ago. And just uh, moving quicker here. And I also attended the Shamu Shek event in, that's why. Uh, this is the, uh, event I attended in uh, in December last year, which is a very uh, a big international event, and these uh, the picture shows our uh, the uh, the directors of of, of the Re center of Elco. Now uh, I would like to move to the. Uh, after the introduction, I would like to move to, to the main course of this um, workshop, which is, um, uh, I will first review the online dispute resolution practice in Hong Kong over the pa past two decades, and also uh, introduce some recent development like the digital courts in Hong Kong, and, um, uh, and then, um, to trigger some discussion on the future of online dispute resolution and how we can make use of this new technology and uh, to uh, provide better services to our client and to the person who need the services. And first of all, uh, ODL on represent online dispute resolution. And I have seen many um, different definitions on ODL and uh, like uh, they have, uh, but they are quite similar to each other. Like for example, uh, from our Department of Justice in Hong Kong, 
Uh, it's just that ODL is the process that utilizes technology in a full spectrum of alternative dispute resolution, ADL, including negotiation, mediation, arbitration, and others. That means any forms of dispute resolution just uh, outside of the court can be happen uh, online. So this is a process of ODL. And uh, for some scholar, like a Professor Ethan Cash uh, so says ODL is a form of online settlement that use alternative method for dispute resolution. And the terms cover disputes that are partially or fully settled over the internet, having been initiated in a cyberspace, but uh, with a source outside it, Offline, it could be parcel offline or parcel online. Can be this can be also treated as an ODR. So it's a very loose definition. Um, the terms of elect electric ADR, maybe E ADR or O ADR, online ADR, and also internet dispute resolution IDR, are treated as uh, 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 used interchangeable. There's uh, synonymous. So that's the um, definition. So it's very loose. Uh, it, any kind of dispute resolution process that use technology can be treated as online dispute resolution. But um, if we can make it, um, uh, we can put this concept uh, into practice and see how this uh, works or not works. So let me show you. Um, so for my, I would like to I always rethink the concept of uh, online dispute resolution. Uh, does it mean a resolution of online dispute or does it mean resolving dispute online? There's a little bit minor difference. It could be resolution, uh, offline resolution of online disputes because the increase of the um, internet, uh, of uh, the use of the internet and also the uh, increase of internet transaction or the e-transaction, the e-commerce, may ask for um, the more dispute resolution online. So that's why it's if we use the internet um, uh, more, and then we will trigger more disputes arising out from online environment, such as uh, electronic transaction. I will give you the domain name uh, a case example. It's a typical. Uh, successful model for online dispute resolution. The dispute is arising out from an online matter and the resolution process is also online. So this is a very uh, typical online dispute resolution. But we are now thinking about um, resolving the dispute uh, online, resolving uh, offline dispute in an online environment. So that's another concept. Uh, so online dispute resolution, it has a lot of meanings. We can rethink it later on. Just uh, uh, give you some question. And so online dispute, again, as a, um, here comes out the reasons why we need ODL because of fast development, expansions of e-commerce, and also the COVID-19 pandemic has also accelerated the use of ODL. So ODL is a mechanism for resolving dispute for the use of electronic communication. In other means, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, all arbitration center, they claim that they have been uh, providing online dispute resolution because traveling in-person meeting in uh, a traditional mode of hearing cannot be um, take place, uh, cannot be taken place uh, under the pandemic. So that's why over the past few years, every arbitration center, they will have a certain kind of guidance of online dispute resolution. Because in the past, I have been uh, trying to promote the online dispute resolution for domaining to expand it to uh, traditional arbitration and mediation. But it has, it has, there has been many years past. Uh, it, the, this kind of transformation is a little bit slow, uh, but the COVID-19, uh, did help uh, speed up the process of the transformation from traditional ADR to ODR. So I'll give you more example later on. 
So we know that uh, there are many advantages, fast and cost saving, and we can have uh, uh, a, um, as can serve as a, one of additional options. We can do it um, flexibly. And uh, the ODL's development also um, drive the court reform to be uh, more uh, modern and uh, uh, technical uh, uh, driven. So these are the major benefits of ODL. And here is uh, some milestones of the development of ODL. At the beginning, I think starting from 1999, the first uh, experiment of using online dispute resolution uh, was initiated by WIPO, uh, the World Intellectual Property Organization, which uh, created the uh, model online dispute resolution for domaining disputes. That was in 1999. When I can, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers um, uh, launched the Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution Policy, and all the process are uh, conducted in an online environment. And moving forward, the United Nations on Economic, cons uh, economic Consumption for Europe organized the first international o ODL uh, forum in Geneva. And I was involved in the organization of a UN ODL forum, I think in 2006 in Hong Kong, that was hosted by Hong Kong uh, University. And moving forward in Hong Kong, we did lead the uh, development of, um, of uh, uh, ODL in Hong Kong, because in 2002, we set up a domain name center um, by, uh, jointly by HKIAC and CTEC in Hong Kong. As a charitable organization in Hong Kong, we uh, dedicated, uh, provide online dispute resolution services for domaining. It's just to test the water, whether it works or not. But uh, of course it, it works because uh, WIPO uh, did it very well. But in Hong Kong, we just make it uh, happen in Hong Kong. Uh, at that time, nobody think about using online dispute resolution to resolve a dispute. And of course, there is uh, so many limitations in terms of technology in setting up such, such a platform. I will give you some uh, some information on how we do that and what are the limitations at that time. And we organized the ODL forum in Hong Kong in 2007 and, and entering in, uh, in the late uh, 2000, um, China, uh, we call it mainland China, start to improve its ODL development and actively um, participated in ODL formation. Like uh, CTEC is an, another center, a major arbitration center in China, also launched its online arbitration rules in 2009. So it's quite uh, in early 2000. So moving forward, um, more and more um, milestones on online dispute resolution are uh, developed. And in terms of the EU regulation on consumer ODL, it's an online platform handle thousands of cases now uh, every year. So um, a very successful consumer dispute resolution um, online and protect the consumer interests. And United Na Nations and also the UNCTRA also published a technical note in 2016 and giving a framework in terms of how to develop a, uh, an online dispute resolution platform and setting out some principle uh, guidelines on uh, the ODL development. And because of this kind of uh, out of the court online dispute resolution uh, developed so rapidly, it triggered the development of the court um, practice, like the litigation uh, can be happen online. So that's why in 2017, in the mainland of China, set up an internet court. I will give you some picture. I visited the internet court in Hangzhou in Beijing, but I missed the chance to visit the one in Guangzhou. And later on in Hong Kong, we've set up an EBRAM, International Online Dispute Resolution Center, 
And my director, uh, Mr. Nick Chen, was also the founding chairman of eBram. And I was the one, uh, one of the executive team in setting up the online dispute resolution for um, arbitration and mediation. It's a multi-tier dispute resolution with secure and much advanced technology used in, for the platform. And, and now our Elko Hong Kong Regional Arbitration Center online platform is also powered by eBram. So it's a very powerful and secure and custom, uh, customized arbitration and mediation platform. And I will give you more information. And moving forward, the APAC also published a, a collaborative framework promoting ODL in uh, different jurisdictions in APAC. And moving forward, uh, eBrain also launched a COVID-19 scheme and uh, also uh, ELCO, HKRAC, our center, also launched our online platform. So you can see that in the, uh, uh, in, in the quite recent year, there are so many new developments in terms of online dispute resolution in Hong Kong. So this is the um, uh, theory. The rapid development of the internet in China is transforming the understanding and practice of dispute resolution. So that's why uh, we understand that this has been a mega trend that we're not going to backward. We have to move forward and uh, to do more things online in terms of resolving this view, we have to go to on, go online. Here comes you, uh, uh, we provide you with some figures and see uh, how is the landscape of the internet in China. Um, in the past, uh, uh, the first email was sent out in China was on, uh, the 20th of September, uh, 1987, to which I, um, I, I, I was a little boy uh, in, in, in that time. But nowadays, um, the CNX statistic uh, report review that the number of netizens in China was one, uh, exceed, uh, exceeded 1 billion. So it's, um, uh, it's uh, 19 million up uh, in comparison with the 2000, if with the earlier year and the internet penetration rate also reached more than 70 percent it's very high and 99.6 of the netizens use mobile device to serve the internet so also china's domain name total that 33 million the more domain name being registered means the more active in the uh, econ uh, in the economic um, uh, community because um, every company will have their own domain name to set up their website. The e-commerce are developing very fast in China. So now moving back to Hong Kong, Hong Kong in, indeed um, is the leader in terms of online dispute resolution because it can be traced back to the year of, um, uh, not 2020, uh, it should be a typo here, it's 2002 when uh, the four organizations set up the Asian Domain in Dispute Resolution Center in Hong Kong, it's a, uh, it's a collaboration of, uh, it's, we can see it as a joint venture of four arbitration center, namely HKIEC, CTEC, and another ELCO Dispute Resolution um, uh, Center, uh, AIAC, formerly known as uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, center for regional arbitration. So this is um, a new center for a setup dedicated for providing online dispute resolution, uh, but not for all commercial, but not for commercial matter, but only for domain name dispute resolution. So it is highly specialized. It is industry based, or we can call it scheme based. We only handle domain name dispute. But why domain names are important that we will explain a little bit. And over the world, only limited organization has the authority to handle domain name dispute. The first one I mentioned is an international organization, WIPO, under the United Nations umbrella. And the second one is the forum, the National Arbitration Forum based in US. 
now we have the one in uh, Asia. And of course, we have the Ar Arab set up the, uh, the ADL.eu based in Czech. So these are the only five center in the world can handle uh, domain name dispute under the authorization of ICANN. So ICANN is the governing body of the, of the whole world's DNS system, and it provides uh, domain name registration services, and it also provides a dispute resolution um, policy for domain name, uh, for the concerning the for disputes concerning the registration and use of a domain name. Example of domain name, uh, I just give you some picture why domain name uh, is important and uh, how domain name dispute can arise. Like this, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether we can see, these are the fake websites concerning uh, different brands like o o Omega and Longchamp Bags and I see Berlin, the classes, and also Alibaba as well. But you can see the from the domain name is a ha Alibaba hyphen lu.com. LU may represent Russia. So these are, and also world pool, this is a domain name, but you can pay attention to the brand name is uh, not a W. Uh, we all know that the, the proper spelling should be W H I L L P O O L. But the cyber squad is very clever. They use double V to represent, to, <laughs> Uh, to pretend as a W, so it's a different domain name, but visibly it is uh, quite confusing. So domain name could be um, very pricey or could be very expensive. So we know that Star Wars is a brand of a Disney, um, uh, but Disney when they launching the movie and they missed to register domain name called a, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, dot com. It's very long, but it's a famous sentence from the movie, but it could worth uh, more than 1 million pounds. So that's a uh, news uh, that shows that domain name could be very important. And why domain name dispute can be uh, happen so easily? Because the I can said uh, the internet is free and open. Everybody can yeah. register they want as the name uh, available. So you can register your competitor's name that will create um, confusion over the internet and will, which will trigger the domain name dispute resolution procedure. So WIPO um, handle increasing number uh, uh, 50,000 cases amidst COVID-19. So that's, uh, you, you can see that it's a high volume cases as well. And it could be repeatedly happen easily because domain name uh, can be easily registered. If you pay, you can register. You can infringe the other side's rights uh, over the internet and um, by the domain name. So I won't go on that much. I just wish to let you know that domain name dispute is very common and popular and you have to handle it how to handle that? You can negotiate. You can contact the domain name registrant and say, "Hi, I would like to buy the domain name back. I would like you pay you money." Of course, you, if you have a lot of money to pay, then you can do it by negotiation, or you can litigate. You can go to court to sue the domain name registrant, but it's not going. It could be costly, but you will never be able to locate the domain name registrant. It could be someone in in a very remote country that you won't be able to uh, kickstart the litigation procedure. So I can provide this kind of arbitration based dispute resolution policy. It's very smart and cost effective and everything is are conducted online in an online uh, system. So the features of domain name services, we can handle different kinds of endings. But we know that we have .com, .net, now we have thought anything. Um, uh, 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 all these domain names under ICANN's governance can be handled by ADN DLC or by WIPO, by other uh, center as well. It's cost effective. Uh, we only charge the complainant, uh, the claimant's uh, 
the fees, the, the, the claimant who would like to kickstart the procedure would uh, have to pay 1,300 US dollar. Depends on the numbers of domain name involved and uh, it is, uh, depends on the single panel member or the three-man tribunal. We have different fees. It's uh, the ODR process, uh, the policy specially, uh, specifically specialized, uh, specified that it's e-filing. Uh, the decision is in electronic format. All decisions are published in a searchable database uh, on, the, on the provider's website. And the three elements is uh, you have as a complainant, the burden of proof is on the complainant must establish that the domain name is identical or confusingly similar to a trademark. And then the current registrant does not have rights and the name has been registered and used in bad faith. So these are the three hurdles that the complainant need to provide evidence to prove. And I won't go into the very details uh, on in terms of domain name because I want to keep domain name dispute resolution as a successful model of ODR here. And the ADN DLC online system was first developed in uh, 2002, uh, just 20 years ago. It was it, it's a fully web-based online system, but of course the technology in 20 years ago is not comparable with the technology uh, now, where we are now using new technology for our, um, our new online platform. But it's always good to look back how, how was uh, less developed in, in the old days, and in the old days, how we uh, struggle everything to trying to set this up in Hong Kong. I think in, uh, early, in 20 years ago, when we are talking about setting up an ODR platform in Hong Kong, it was quite trendy things and uh, not many people would like to invest money to do that. But of course, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the full arbitration center uh, led by the Hong Kong uh, IEC and uh, we invested a lot in developing this uh, platform, even though with the old technology, uh, we, we have been able to make it up. So this is uh, just a, a quick look of the um, of the clumsy uh, uh, platform that we have uh, uh, making up uh, the, the, the first version of, of, of course, in um, there were several revamp after the first version, but it's uh, quite funny to looking back and, and this, um, the platform is very uh, basic, but the functionality is okay. Uh, you, you can uh, go through all the process from the case filing and also from the uh, response uh, filing and also a uh, case administrator can, admin can administer the case quite efficiently because all the emails are quite standardized. The uh, case administrator can send out email template or email notification to parties by clicking a few buttons. Um, and it's the good thing I, is uh, uh, the computer will store all the information and you don't, you don't need to type the uh, retype the party's name or the case ID because uh, when a human being doing that, it will be very easy to get wrong. But the, for the computer, um, the good thing is uh, it will uh, enhance the accuracy in in the uh, communication because I, I, uh, because the uh, all the data has been stored in in a, a computer uh, in the platform that the case administrator just create. Uh, email template for the notification. So that, that will be very efficient in administer the case. So here are some cases, but I won't go through in detail, just let you know the brand who are using the services. This is called, um, uh, what's the name in this view? Uh, DJI, the name is, uh, which is a, a very famous technology company. And also, um, Alibaba Group is also uh, concerning uh, Tmall uh, dot company domain name. And these are also Alibaba uh, uh, filings as well. Uh, some domain names are in Russian uh, character and the local uh, 
broadcasting company in Hong Kong, the TVB, uh, are using uh, celebrities. Lady Gaga also concerned uh, filed a domain name complaint to recover its name under the .cn, the China domain name. And WeChat also filed a pinyin domain name. And that's a, and in, in terms of the arguments, there were a lot of in, interesting story, and, but I won't go into the detail. The luxury brand like you know, Cartier, they, they also use, use this kind of domain name dispute resolution services. So from the statistic, uh, uh, from the statistic of the domain name, it's going to be success, high volume, low cost, um, very speedy. And uh, of course the complainant pays all, all, all the cost uh, because you will, uh, in most of the cases, you will never be able to locate uh, the respondent domain name register. So the purpose is to just to recover the domain name or to suspend the website, which is selling counterfeited products. But it's very useful. It's a very uh, fast track procedure. Uh, the whole proceeding can be completed within um, 60 days, less than two months. Uh, you can take down a website and you can uh, protect your brand. You can uh, um, create a good image of your company, of your corporation. Otherwise, if you, uh, some of the cyber squatter will use the domain names to set up that is con confusingly similar to your brand to set a fake website and to attract your business. So this would be quite, um, uh, um, it's quite uh, stressful to, in, in, in some circumstances. So the brand owner have to continue to keep fighting the main dispute. And now, as I mentioned, um, this kind of development has triggered the transformation of um, the court uh, litigation process. I think uh, mainland China is moving very fast. As I mentioned, the use of internet in China is very popular. Everybody go on the internet. And even though uh, they, uh, I was told in, uh, that uh, uh, the small uh, uh, dealers, they also use uh, electronic payment in China. So, um, Everybody in China is now using electronic payment, electronic uh, uh, buying things online. So naturally they will resolve their dispute online, even though the court procedure. And in China, they started to, um, in, to establish the internet court in China, um, think that would be in 2017. After several years of investigation and preparation, they set it up the first internet court in Hangzhou because Alibaba Group was there, the, the biggest online platform in China. Um, um, I got the opportunity to visit uh, uh, the internet court in Hangzhou in Beijing. And here is the facilities. And we can see that the judges is sitting here and the secretary is sitting here. Uh, I uh, was the, uh, the tourist, the, a visitor to, to look around and the, the parties here and we have, they have also re reception and everything is uh, conducted um, online and they, they don't need to have an in-person meeting. So everybody is staying in their own place, uh, connecting with each other through different device. They, they, may, they can use a mobile phone to connect with the judge here and then they can call on a witness to come and to keep a witness statement over the internet. So um, it's very fast and very effective. And this is a picture. I'm, I also make it a bigger and make it a more clear. It shows that the um, Hangzhou Internet Court uh, electronic um, uh, service of notification. Uh, platform, just telling you that how effective in terms of uh, delivering the notice of the court to the parties in electronic format in comparison to the um, to the service of notice um, uh, offline. It, it, there is a very uh, interesting comparison in terms of date. It, it took um, uh, seven minutes to deliver in, in traditionally and they take a uh, a few weeks to deliver a notice. So it, it, it's much more faster to notify a party 
um, by a court um, in an electronic way rather than in a traditional way. So you can see that the whole process can be uh, speeded up um, very much. So um, in terms of the jurisdiction, I um, think uh, Hangzhou uh, Internet Court has uh, made it uh, very clear that it's real it has a very wide jurisdiction indeed, but uh, focus on internet related dispute. I'm not going to read it out, but just let you know that uh, it is, uh, um, it mentioned that like dispute over online shopping contract can be subject to the uh, court um, litigation proceeding uh, in the internet court in Hangzhou. And uh, likewise, the litigation documents um, um, can, uh, uh, can be in elect should be in electronic format. So this is a very important. You don't need to print out documents and submit in hard copy because it could be a very bulky document. And if you are talking about um, a very com a complicated commercial arbitration, but uh, since the dispute. Uh, now from an online transaction yeah, uh, because there was, should not be that much um, hard copy documents because all transactions are captured in uh, mobile phone uh, print screen. So these are all in electronic format. So it will be uh, very um, easy to submit electronic format uh, evidence rather than in hard copy. So later on, just one year later, the Beijing Internet uh, Court was also set up. And they have, uh, I compared the jurisdiction with the Hangzhou Internet Court, a little bit different. The difference is the uh, Internet Court in Hangzhou, uh, in Beijing, uh, uh, the Beijing Internet Court uh, has a jurisdiction over internet public interest. Uh, I, I don't know how to interpret it, but maybe uh, it seems that it has a wider jurisdiction in terms of litigation cases filed by um, the uh, uh, in the uh, 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 procurial uh, organs. So this is a, um, a little bit different in terms of the uh, jurisdiction. And the Guangzhou Internet Court as well, uh, I think they are quite similar to the Hang. Hangzhou one. So currently there are three internet courts in China. Um, but what are the implications? Would that be um, uh, trigger the digital um, transformation of all courts in mainland China? It could be, but it may take time because you need to um, uh, fit in this kind of facility. It could be expensive. Um, uh, to uh, for all the courts to equip with this kind of um, uh, equipment, but it has proved that uh, it could be very. It has been very effective for moving um, offline litigation process to to online because it's faster and maybe much more secure because it has the big data. They can identify uh, the identity of of the parties easily. Because the, once you have the mobile phone and you have, uh, you, if you are using uh, WeChat and uh, any other uh, online uh, uh, services, so your data or your uh, your identity can be easily be uh, identified. So this is very useful in in mainland China, and the evidence of proof are all in electronic format. Now, in terms of the, um, uh, in the international community, they also recognize this um, positive development in ODL in different parts of the world, like in Hong Kong, in mainland China. So the international community, um, like for example, Ancicho, which is also uh, very useful, very important um, international body for driving the development of dispute resolution and arbitration as well. So in um, in 2016, the an, the Ancho, uh, sorry, the 2006, the Ancho's first official legal document in ODL, it set up a working group three, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, is which uh, which is tasked to um, 
discuss the uh, the possibility of formalizing a set of online arbitration rules. I also attended the uh, ODR Working Group Three uh, section in, in in Vienna. That was in two thousand and ten. I was uh, representing the ADNDLC as an observer in in that uh, uh, section, and and uh, after several years of discussion, the Anshicho Working Group Group Three resulted in a non-binding um, note on the technical requirement on ODL, which was published in 2016. It has been discussing for 10 years. So because a lot of interest, they need to balance. So that, and moving forward quite recently uh, in 2018, an APEC ODL framework was uh, published by APEC, encouraging all the uh, members of APEC, the uh, member economies of APEC to uh, adopt ODL as a preferred method for resolving uh, dispute, uh, a commercial dispute, in particular for those commercial dispute involving MSME, uh, the micro and medium uh, and, uh, enterprises, because the MSME is a very um, important uh, uh, economic uh, power in the APEC members. And it, it shows that 99% uh, all, of all business are MSME. So uh, because the companies is uh, small, they may not have the power or the legal power uh, they, uh, to hire a lawyer. They may not have the resources to hire a lawyer uh, to fight for their interest in if there is a, a violation of a contract or if there's a breach of contract happens, their interest may be harmed if there was no um, uh, effective resolution for the dispute. So what happened is they will they will have problem in accessing justice. So this is a very serious matter, and uh, APEC, in view of this situation, just uh, uh, put a lot of effort in promoting the use of ODL because they see that online dispute resolution has all the benefit in providing effective and speedy resolution for commercial dispute, and which will help eventually help the uh, MSME to protect their legitimate interest. So this is a, um, a new development uh, from the international community uh, on the development of ODR. Um, I mentioned that MSME is facing regulatory challenges. These are the difficulties uh, regu uh, MSME are uh, um, facing. And moving forward, um, B2B ODL for MSME, yes, it's, um, it could be subject to online dispute resolution by APEC economies. An APEC framework has been um, uh, published and um, many arbitration center ODL service provider are uh, being recognized um, as a recognized dispute resolution service provider under the framework, including eBrand. And uh, our new center is also in the process of being accredited as a dispute resolution uh, body under the APEC framework. And under the APEC ODL framework, it's a very uh, significant, um, it's a very outstanding feature. So, uh, it has three stages comprising negotiation stage, mediation stage, and arbitration stage as well. And uh, the use of AI or modern technology is encouraged in any of the three stages. So the framework encouraged more modern technology are used. So I just recall that what we, uh, what I did uh, in, uh, in 20 years ago when I setting up the ODL platform for domain name. We don't have AI when we don't have, we don't even have a video conferencing technology as well, because domain name disputes are all based on document only. And, but nowadays we have uh, very good 
infrastructure for the internet. We we can uh, conduct video conference uh, quite stably. Um, so that's why uh, the technology advancement is very obvious in the re recent year, which will trigger the wider application of online dispute resolution. Uh, so the, that is uh, not comparable in 20 years ago but nowadays. So we, it is the right time for Hong Kong uh, or for the, the older country uh, to, um, to, in, um, to promote a wider use of online dispute resolution. And the ODL procedure under the APEC rules, um, uh, it has uh, set up a model rules. It has a template for the ODL procedure rules for each economic to adopt. You can just uh, copy and paste. And of, of course, you can tailor make uh, your own features. But as long as um, it is not in the violation of the principle of the uh, ODL framework, so it will just like the UNCTO model law, it, is a, it has set up some standardized rules for ODL. So it's very useful um, framework. And I believe that it will um, have a lot of positive uh, impact to the development of ODL. And now coming back to Hong Kong, and we know we have talked about the mainland courts um, um, have been revamping. Now, how about the Hong Kong courts? Yes, uh, Hong Kong judiciary also uh, published a, um, uh, a consultation paper on remote hearing, uh, encouraging the use of technology in the courtroom. And the judicial also invited the public to give views on the draft field and the draft uh, practice directions and the draft operational guidelines on using technology in the courtroom. So we have in Hong Kong just uh, completed the collection of um, views and comments. And here is a hyperlink link to the document um, showing more details of the, how Hong Kong court is inviting comments. Uh, it's going to reform its uh, court litigation procedure. Um, it's a bit late, but, uh, but it's a very good move for Hong Kong. Um, it uh, has, uh, it's late, but the, it gives the Hong Kong the opportunity to adopt the latest technology. Um, so the later, maybe the better. Um, the technology court in Hong Kong, maybe uh, uh, should be proof from here. Um, here are some features, video conferencing um, technology, it can save costs. This is the technology. Um, readily available in all the in in the courtrooms in hong kong and also um multi uh, multi uh, media presentation of evidence uh, we have a recent cases in hong kong the court order and, uh, acceptance of the, the evidence in electronic um format so this is a very this is the fir first first time that the hong kong court accept um, electronic filing of evidence. And of course, there are many uh, technology facilitating the smooth uh, conduct of the court, like to, such as the interactive display and pen touch display, which is um, uh, requires a very, you have to use a very good equipment. This could be ex expensive, um, but it, it's good uh, to have this kind of uh, equipment and visualizer as well and uh, image capture and display and electronic bundling uh, which enable uh, uh, easy lo location of a certain kind of document because uh, for complex litigation cases it, it's quite consuming to locate certain kind of document with the electronic bundling uh, technology you can search by keyword to find uh, the right document uh, quickly so of, of course, interpretation services, um, it is uh, available as well because uh, also multilingual uh, cases is quite often in Hong Kong. It's Hong Kong is a multi, uh, it's a uh, multicultural um, a society and the court cases may often involve different languages. 
So it's good for Hong Kong court to adopt the technology. But uh, moving forward, I would like to give, a, give you a link to our online platform. Uh, I, I won't have the, uh, the time to show up the details of our platform, but I would like to highlight that uh, in terms of the technology we are using, and it is quite different with the other uh, ODL service provider. The first I would like to highlight the um, video conferencing technology we use is not is is it is a tailor made one. We develop our um, own video conferencing technology. We're not using Zoom like this one. Uh, we're not using the mainland technology. We use Hong Kong technology for the video conferencing because um, we treat it as a very high priority to provide a secure video conferencing. Uh, what, I, that's, what I mean is that uh, I just learned a term from a, a technology person because, I, so, because a lot of uh, arbitration hearing were conducted uh, with consumer grade technology. What does consumer grade means? It means we use um, this quite, it is not customized technology. So the technology we use for video conferencing for, or for arbitration hearing mediation meeting are customized. It's also tailor-made for this dispute resolution platform. And the data storage is also in Hong Kong. That means all data, the audio data, visual data, um, conducted, uh, uh, submitted to our platform, are uh, stored in Hong Kong server and ho hosted in Hong Kong. And also all data are protected by Hong Kong law. So that's why we provide this kind of secure and customized online um, video conferencing technology for arbitration hearing. So the technology is not available 20 years ago, but now is readily available in Hong Kong. And other new technology we use is um, some maybe uh, translation services, electronic signing, and in the future, we will add some blockchain technology so that to, to timestamp the documents. So these are uh, on, on the pipeline and we will be we will gradually roll out to the market and to address the needs of the parties. So here comes back to my question is whether it is uh, the original definition of ODL, is it just a simply resolve dispute online? Or just uh, does it mean that just uh, use the um, technology to assist the dispute resolution uh, procedure partially or uh, partially conducted offline? So I think it would be necessary for uh, Hong Kong or maybe for some technology advanced uh, jurisdiction to have um, a better definition or maybe have a, a, a much more stringent definition on, on, on the security of the online dispute resolution, in particular for online arbitration, because it's confidential. Because if you're talking about online litigation, because litigation is, uh, is public, uh, there's no big concern on, on, the, uh, uh, on the confidentiality for most of the cases. So, but for, but for arbitration, they may have a good reason to have um, a much more secure technology to protect confidentiality in arbitration. So that's why it is readily available in Hong Kong at the Elko Regional Arbitration Center's online arbitration platform. So that's why I would like to highlight that the technologies are evolving and the definition of ODL should be also evolving. You should adopt the latest technology to provide the best uh, services or to, be, to address the needs of the parties. Because the party didn't know that the technology is available, but in terms of the technology, I think Hong Kong is in a leading position. And in terms of the legal framework for arbitration, Hong Kong is well recognized as a leading hub for arbitration for a long time. So here are the, uh, another slide uh, to suggest we should rethink ODR and the digital court. 
it will provide better access to justice for everyone, not only the big corporation, but in particular for MSME, like the initiative um, uh, encouraged by APEC, it's really helped the, the person who do not, who the company who do not have the resources to fight for arbitration. It will enable more companies to access to justice. And we will also think about it is um, uh, like we all know that it's affordable and speedy and a lot of new technology. And this will be very useful in terms of capacity building. Just think of the green box you here. And uh, we will create a lot of uh, cases for young arbitrator and maybe for young lawyer to practice their knowledge. They learn from the law school. If, there are, if a law student graduates, um, they, will, they do not have the chance to practice that they, um, they will not be able to, um, to mature their skills. So that's why we need to provide more uh, pra uh, practice opportunity to, uh, to the community. So I just re rethink what I did for the domain name uh, system. It does provide a lot of cases. Um, it's a simple case, but sometimes could be complicated. Um, it is uh, very useful for capacity building because young practitioners, they can uh, start their arbitrator career by acting as a domain name panelist. They, when, when they um, uh, sharpen their skills for arbitrator and they move forward to handle big cases. So um, developing online dispute resolution will have a lot of positive impact to the community. And it is, uh, uh, we will help building our uh, very good ecosystem for the, um, for the global dispute resolution uh, community as well. So here is a picture, a slide showing Hong Kong's advantages. Um, why arbitrating in Hong Kong? Uh, just very quickly to go through, we are uh, one country, two system. Uh, we are running a common law jurisdiction. Um, we are common law jurisdiction, which is different with the mainland China, but we are under the one country. That means we are quite uh, familiar with the culture in China and we can handle, uh, we are in a very good position to handle dispute involving Chinese elements. And Hong Kong has been well recognized as a preferred arbitration seat in the world. And the legislative framework for arbitration is advanced and modern. We adopted the latest uh, model law and we keep revamping it, uh, put in our own features. So it's a very, uh, advanced framework, then uh, expertise, and and also one new feature uh, among the other thing is that we have the access to enforcement of arbitral interim measures in the mainland Chinese court. I just would maybe just quickly go through here. The full name is so-called uh, arrangement concerning mutual assistance in court ordered interim measure in aid of arbitral proceedings by the court in mainland of uh, Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. The name is very long, but in short, it just give you a uh, uh, long story. In short, it's um, parties to an arbitration in Hong Kong uh, administered by the recognized arbitral bodies can seek um, the help from the mainland China court to enforce the uh, arbitrator's direction order in terms of um, uh, to preserve certain kinds of evidence or um, to um, have to, to enforce this kind of interim measure. So before the arrangement, um, it could be difficult to enforce an arbitral order outside the mainland China, because when big cases involving the parties um, from the mainland China, it is quite often to seek help from the mainland China court to preserve evidence or to have certain kind of security, like the security for claims, security for costs, because the, uh, the access is, is in China, you might need to seek help from the PLC court to 
to freeze the access, to protect the evidence. So this kind of um, interim measure is quite often in big cases. Um, but in the past, without a arrangement, the parties have to go to mainland to submit the application to the court directly. But with the arrangement, um, they just uh, forward the parties, uh, forward the tribunal's order, and the court will enforce it. So it's uh, much straightforward and simple and useful. Um, has, uh, um, up to now, there has been more than 50 uh, order granted by the um, mainland people's court. So it's a, it is very u u useful in facilitating the arbitration process in Hong Kong. And so why Elco Hong Kong RAC? Because um, I, uh, we have a special status, uh, nationality neutral, and also we provide a state of the art platform. But at the beginning, I didn't know what does state of the art means, but I just e explain, I use the new technology, a much more secure and customized technology for arbitration, not the consumer grade level. Uh, technology can compare. And we have the expertise when, and uh, in resolving dispute with Asian and African elements because we have a panel of arbitrators who are familiar with this um, region and jurisdiction. So these are the pictures and we are part of the ELCO dispute resolution system, which we can provide mutual assistance and we can interact with other uh, ELCO center for a system. So um, here comes the end of my presentation. I'm not sure whether it will be uh, too long. Um, so I uh, give the floor back to Yasmin, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Dennis, for this uh, lovely, inspiring workshop. I'd like to ask uh, our attendees if, there's, if anyone has a question uh, for Mr. Dennis to respond to. All right, then I believe we don't have any questions. Um, so I'd like to thank you very much once again, Mr. Dennis, for this workshop. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you, Yasmin. And hope I will stay in touch. If any uh, further question uh, coming up, just uh, feel free to let us know. Of course, and if anyone has anything to ask me and I'll pass it on to you, of course I will do. Okay, thank you very much. All right, everyone, thank you very much for today and have a wonderful day. Okay, thank you, Yasmin, thank you. You're welcome, have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.